This is how we ride. This is how we do. It hasn't. It hasn't been. The opportunity hasn't been open. Obviously, you come in here with the flow situation and high limit. Um, and then, and then the Eldora Speedway deal happens. What is, uh, I made a video yesterday saying, you know, you know, shine that, shine that 48 hours up real nice, turn a hundred miles sideways and stick it up your candy ass. What is going to happen with that million being right there? I know y'all kind of broke it down in y'all's live, but I didn't catch that part. So what's the situation or is, or is everybody just assuming they ain't going to stop nobody? Yeah. I mean, that's the case. I just, like I mentioned, you know, yesterday there's there's no rule that's ever going to be made that's going to stop you know me or the other drivers especially the elite drivers for racing for a million dollars i mean it's just i mean that's bigger than any series or any situation and probably it could be once in our lifetime situation we we don't know you know that's that's probably not an event that's a yearly event you know every year it's a it's a you know one off here and there you know, to, to but, really, but technically, you know, word for word, it it, it it is in violation of that proposed. I'm going to assume proposed, uh, you yeah. know, for race, uh, 48 hour, 100 mile, uh, you know, proposal by the World of Outlaws. It does technically violate that. I mean, I remember asking Donnie Schatz at the late model million if I put on a million dollar race, he can't race it. And he's kind of responding, you know, nobody's going to stop uh, somebody from doing <laughs> that. But I almost yeah. took that race that. Stewart put out almost in response to that proposal like no that's not good enough well i mean i think there's going to be stuff that's just going to fall into that very you know very back of the rule book the rule that says uh but we can still make whatever rule we want so it's gonna i'm sure it's gonna fall under the exempt category uh in fact i did even ask brian and you know he didn't give me full clarity on it but he didn't act like that was something that we weren't going to be able to race obviously so uh like i said i mean it, it doesn't matter what rules there uh you know the race is paying a million dollars i mean you you know how many outlaw wins or championships you have to win to, to make a million dollars yep. i think it's you know you're going to take the risk as a driver whether you lose platinum status or not i mean we're racing for a million dollars it's just that's just all there is to it it's kind of it almost makes me laugh when people think, oh, they're not going to be able, allowed to. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, I'm definitely going. Uh, I'm definitely you know, going to have the Napa Auto Parts number 49 battling for a million dollars. There's just no doubt in my mind about that. Well, how do you feel about that? I guess I, I made a video about it saying it's a proposal. Obviously, I, I don't, no posts of who's all signed the World of Outlaw next year agreement. It, 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 and I was saying, you know, don't lose the power of no. Uh, is that four race, hundred mile, 48 hour deal, something that you feel like, I mean, in our talk with Donnie shots, it felt like there, he kind of alluded to a group of teams and drivers are together, ready to make decisions on things in the sprint car scene is 48 hours, a hundred miles and only four races acceptable to, to the people in this, in this game that seems to be being played in the off season this year. I think it's, I think everybody's looking at it from, you know, their different points of view. I mean, you know, I think there's different tiers that go down the down the list. You, you know, you have your three or four or maybe five guys that think they can actually contend for a championship. Then you have guys that are, you know, maybe trying to get top five in points. You have guys that are trying to, you know, run that through that sixth through tenth range. And you know, I think there's businesses. It, it, in all due respects, so, though, that this four race forty eight hour deal ain't meant for Noah Gas. This is meant for no disrespect. No, I'm just saying this is meant for those top teams who want to run. I mean, without saying it, I mean the high limit races. This is that's what that's even out there for. High limits and other events. Obviously, this Eldor Million is going to be ex- and have an exception all on, all on its own. Apparently, I'm just saying that this isn't attuned to those guys that are this. This proposal isn't meant for those middle pack guys. This proposal is meant for the top drivers who want to go run at the high limit elite series. Well, I think that I think it's acknowledging that there's other bigger pain there's other big pain races out there and that and that the drivers and owners want the ability to go run to have the freedom to go run for a little extra if something pops up and whether it be a high limit or a million at eldora or some big all-star race that falls in the middle of the week i think you know it's whatever the teams decide and it's four and you keep your benefits or it's eight and you lose that deal so there's going to be guys in the middle of the pack i think that'll go ahead and run the eight freedom races just because they'll have more of a chance to make the money back you know racing some high limit races or but they lose the bonus money i believe correct if they go past the four 
and all the yeah, other stipulations. So why would but a middle pack guy who's dependent on kind of show up bonus money to survive do that? Well, you don't lose your show up money. You lose the exclusivity bonus, which is right. just the end of the year to add it on to the point fund. So like in the middle of the pack, you know, that can be around forty to fifty thousand dollars at the very end that you'll get extra. Right. But then or you make a decision to run four other races, like if you feel like you could win one or two of them, you might make that money back, you know, and and uh, you know, so I think that's gonna be decisions that certain drivers in certain situations are gonna have to make. I think it's gonna be all over the map and I think honestly, you know, if you're having a bad year you might say screw it and go just chase money. Or if you're having a if you're leading the points and there's and you're surprised that you leave the points, you might change your mind and, and just, you know, run for the point championship. It's, it's, I think there's going to be a lot of, you know, just because you sign a platinum agreement doesn't mean you can't change your mind, you know, halfway, three quarters of the way through the season. Not saying that you you will or you want to. I just, you know, I think situations change and, and you see it every year. A team will be signed up and, and fall off or, you know, uh, something happens, some unforeseen circumstance. So, yeah, I think it's a pretty liquid situation. I think I don't know that everybody has a clear path i think the outlaws still need to give us some clarity on which races count towards the four i mean we wanted to gain right like we're supposed to gain a little freedom well that's why i say is four enough i don't think it's enough i think it's enough to say no well i think the thing about the four is we've always had four we've always had the capitani we've always had uh you know the oscaloosa race and then we've also we've also always had four nights at eldora so you know we you know, as race drivers, we wanted we, what we were asking for, and teams are asking for, was to gain a little something more. You know, not not just a lateral move, not some optical illusion that makes makes it look like we're gaining. We actually are asking for some sort of a gain. You know, some sort of meet in the middle approach. And if you're gaining four additional races, and then eight if you lose the benefits, but they were all additional to to those Eldora races and those other races, then I think we would probably be, there's some clarity. I think you'd actually probably feel a little bit better about it, but there's some unknowns and, and the outlaws I think need to clarify that for the team so that, so we can make a bit, little bit better decisions or more, more educated decisions anyway. Well, I just think if there's this kind of group of people that are together and can make a, a, a group decision that, I, I just I just think in a situation where the I, I, like I say I see it as a proposal. It's something that doesn't necessarily have to be accepted. If there is this group, like uh, shots alluded to, that is making choices, you can you could negotiate, right? Because I think that what they're about to do, whatever is about to be set, they're going to try to hold the teams that have taken this on accountable in years to come. Like this four race make it or break it is not really going to move much. Whatever's agreed on in this off season is kind of going to be the new setting stone for the outlaws going forward. That's where I would see it. So I think you kind of have to yeah. battle for your long-term ability as well. Well, I think you can have a group all you want, but if you only have one place to go race, then you're never going to have much leverage in a, a negotiation. And and honestly, you know, I, I think the owners were hopeful that there would be like more of a negotiation type situation but i think brian and the world racing group's approach is more like we're listening here's you know a take it or leave it type offer that's why it's more announced just to the public not necessarily you know not you know behind closed doors right. like kind of negotiate it's more like here take it or leave it we don't really you know like we're not doing any more we're not doing any less and you either come race with us and here's our deal or you don't and then uh well that's you know, v- then, very uh, bad for sprint car racing for them to take that approach well, I think it's a it's a short term band aid, but I think there's it still leaves you know some teams and and you know a, a group of owners that are investing a lot into the sport and you know making it all go around. I mean, you got to have team owners, and these guys are spending a lot of money. They're asking for you know a little transparency or, or a little bit of freedom or something to help offset some of these costs. And you know, I, I give Brian credit; he's done a great job uh, raising levels and and. And doing things, and then I think what happened with the late model side, you know, created a open a can of worms, and then the high limit thing, you know, made it even harder. And you know, I think it's just a lot of pressure on a on a vulnerable situation. And he's trying to make good decisions for his brand, and you know, now he has pressure from from us and team owners, and you know, it's a it's a tricky situation. And at the end of the day, I mean, 
it's just competition. It's basically we'll figure out, uh, you know, a direction. I think as we move forward, I think teams will make decisions. I think that'll, you know, kind of maybe speak to where people are at with the situation. Um, you know, you just, it's just all business. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of big races out there that aren't World of Outlaws, and that's, that's what's kind of you know making teams probably look at, at what direction they're going to go. This is how we ride. This is how we do.